those of you who don't know me, I'm Stoddard Mojado. I'm currently the president of the board at Greyhound Friends. I want to thank you all for coming to our Greyhound Friends International Update. It is great to see some old friends that I haven't seen in a number of years and some new ones. First, I first started having Greyhounds in my house, in my apartment in Cambridge, in Hermesburg. So we used to take the extras over to Dr. Pauling's to his vet hospital. So what he says we did. Oh, you did it. I know. <laughs> She's what, denying it. I know, I know, I just don't remember it. <laughs> is that when he would say, you know, this dog has been here for a long time. You really should try to move the dog onto someplace else. So I'd walk the dog out the back door, change its collar, <laughs> walk in the front door, <laughs> and introduce him to somebody else. <laughs> and tick control. If we look at the products we have today, there are liquids, there are tablets, and there's a new collar that I think is totally new technology and of great interest. All of these products pretty much kill 100% of the fleas and ticks that are exposed to the animals. The oral products, there's a three-month product and there's a one-month product. They're excellent, but they don't have repelling effect. And repelling effect is, is vital because in New England we have so many ticks and, and fewer fleas, but so many ticks uh, that if any number of ticks are attaching, there's a great probability of transmitting tick-borne diseases to our dogs. The, uh, the travesty now is that there are lots and lots of greyhounds that are available. They're extraneous. Um, it's sort of like there's an industry that's laid all these critters off, and they, they're laid off. They're not useful anymore. So what's happening in this country is some of them are going to uh, the American West. They're used for coyote hunting. And uh, also in the Midwest, they're used, um, they're bred with hunting dogs to make faster hunting dogs. And uh, again, it just produces more dogs. So we're, we're trying in, in every way that we can to help all of these contingencies, to help uh, the American lurchers. We're trying to, on the 25th, we're going to bring in six American lurchers from the uh, Midwest. And you know, it's not, it, we always bring in dogs as representatives for all the other dogs that don't get to come. Um, the uh, situation for greyhounds in Ireland is another thing we're, we're concentrating on because with racing ending, um, it doesn't seem like the Irish have really stopped breeding uh, an awful lot. So there's still, there's, they don't have the market, but they have still have all these dogs. And that's, a major concern. It's, it really, really is. Um, and the other current sort of thing we're really worried about is dogs going to China, especially the Irish dogs. Since the Australian dogs aren't going there right now, but um, for social media, what what was effective for you over the last year? A story that really moved you to do something, because that's what this is about. Um, I mean, in this under this tent, there are a lot of people that really understand the power of getting the story out. And one of the things that I think is fine, that I'm finding very interesting is that what I call kind of the blood and guts story where somebody posts on Facebook a really horrific photograph and a really horrific story, I'm finding that that just doesn't have the impact that it used to. And maybe the impact that it did have was not the most um, beneficial or effective. Um, the Amber Alert Forum, which started on Grey Talk before Facebook was around, has um, found probably thousands of lost greyhounds over the years, going back 
probably at least 10 years on Facebook and more recently uh, on Grey Talk. Um, sadly, some of them are not found at all, which is probably the worst feeling, and some are found deceased. Um, but the majority are found alive and well even after up to two years, which um, was the most, Rita probably was going to be here today. Rita is probably the most famous lost greyhound case, if you follow any of the social media. She was um, off the track in Florida, and a new shy dog, as most of the lost dogs are the new shy dogs, unfortunately. And um, after two patient years of feeding her and trying to lure her in, Michael and his team of volunteers down in Florida were able to uh, capture her with a very unconventional method, which is a drop net, which um, took her two months just to get her to trust. Rita Gilford. I live in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. <laughs> and I make this trip twice a month because there is so many beagle mixes, you know, hounds, hound mixes down in our area. And thanks to Louise and uh, Greyhound Friends, she's able to save some of them. Somebody gave us money for a logo and we wanted to depict all the animals because then with Animal Welfare, we have horses, we have rabbits, we have a lot of cats, we have goats, we have some pigs. We Can we show you one of your alumni? <laughs> one of your alumni. Is scary. Oh, hello. Well, we have we have everything coming to the door of the sanctuary, and um, in Ireland, if you have a building and you have a couple of acres, people actually think it has you know expanding sites, and that you, if you're an animal person, you bring bring the animals, whatever they are, to the animal place. So we're known as being in the minority in Ireland. Animal welfare is very much the minority, eccentric, and a little bit, I'll just say, crazy, you know. With racing ending in the first world, we, we have to try to do the best we can for the, the leftover population, uh, both here and, and everywhere else. Um, so it's great to have people here who are uh, really concerned. Very I think the people who are attending are, are sort of, I always think about like the hardcore people, people who are really interested, invested, and are going to uh, you know learn a lot from each other. and. Uh, Pass it along.